Welcome. Welcome to the Plan Commission meeting for November 7th. For those that have not had the pleasure of attending one of our meetings before, first of all, I ask that you silence your cell phone so that we're not uh, bothered by them during the meeting. Second of all, the way the process works is once we're done with the roll call and approval of the minutes, city staff will present on the items. Once they're done presenting, first of all, it's open just to the commission for technical questions. Once we're done with our technical questions, we open it up to the public for comment or questions. And if you have anything to say, please step up to the microphone over there, state your name and address, and then tell us what you think. And please try to keep it as germane to the topic as possible. Once everybody who has chosen to spoke on a topic is done, we bring it back to the commission for discussion and usually a vote. With that, follow the roll. David Borsak, Ed Bowen. Jeffrey Tomes. Here. Thomas Vitek. Here. John Hintz. Here. Steve Cummings. Kathleen Prop. Here. John Kiefer. Here. Robert Viger. Here. Michael Ford. Here. Moving on to the approval of the minutes from October 17th. Do we have any additions, corrections, deletions to those minutes? Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion clearly passes. Moving on to item number one, residential design standards variance to allow for size reduction of a door opening for installation of a window at the residence of 905 Washington Avenue. Thank you. You're welcome. So for this one, as was stated in the title, the applicant is requesting approval of a variance from the design standards um, to allow for size reduction of a door opening for installation of a window at 905 Washington Avenue. The applicable ordinance provision that applies here is section 30-241B3 and that is existing door openings on the front or the first 20 feet of the side facades shall not be closed or filled. Um, so here you can kind of see on the right circled there is the door opening in question that they would look to replace with a window. Um, I believe it was a two-family structure and they want to convert it back to a single-family structure. This property and all properties surrounding it are zoned SR9 single family residential. I'm trying to see if we have anything for maps in here. Oh, okay. Um, here it is. Um, so you can see it in blue, the subject site. That's SR9 single family residential. And then all the properties immediately surrounding it are SR9 single family residential. Um, Comprehensive plan land use recommendation for 10 and 20 year land use recommendation are residential land uses. Um, so basically staff talked about this and as was mentioned, the design standards variance to allow the partial closure of, a door, closure of a door opening on the north front facade because the applicant does not feel that it is needed due to the fact that it will be a single family structure again. And so the door would be replaced with a window. You can see a window to the left of that door there. It'd be the same size opening as that window to the left there. Um, the trim at the window would be the same type of trim. You can see on the left, the current, this drawing of the current state of the house. On the right, a drawing showing both windows. So the new window would be window B there um, to replace that door. Um, staff evaluated the proposal to replace the door with the window and the impact on the design of the home in regard to the purpose and intent of the design standards as they relate to preserving the home's architectural integrity as well as the potential impact on adjacent properties, the neighborhood character, and the curb appeal of the block. Staff is of the opinion that the new window will not negatively impact the architectural style or curb appeal of the house. Staff believes that the purpose and intent of the design standards are being upheld as the new window and its trim will be consistent in size and appearance with other existing windows, which should not detract from the appearance of the facade. Condition would be that the window trim would match the color of the remaining window trims on the house. So the recommendation is that staff recommends approval of a variance from the city's residential design standards to allow for size reduction of a door opening for installation of a window at the residence at 905 Washington Avenue with the condition that the window trim will be consistent with the trim at the other windows and doors of the house. All right, thank you. Technical questions, Jeff. Uh, two questions. Is the window B that's gonna be installed to be installed on the same horizontal plane as the existing windows? Yes, I believe so. And the trim and siding and stuff, typically we 
we, we would put a general timeline when they had to have that done. Is that to be done with the installation of the window, or do we allow them? You know, well, we can find out if the applicant's here if they're proposing to do it all in one. Okay. Or you do it, or you put it a, a condition on like we have within a year. Yeah, I, I want to hear from the applicant on that because right. if he's going to do it when they do the window, I, I've got no problem with that. But other than that, we should, because this is a facing of the street, I don't want to be waiting, you know, six months after they put the window in to put the trim on. Other technical questions? All right, seeing none, anyone here from the public to speak to this item today? Come on up, sir. I'm just going to answer the question. I'm actually the owner of that house. Okay. Just give us your name and address so she has Dave a... Stadzinski, 905 Washington Avenue. Thank you, Dave. And just to answer the question, the trim will be done immediately and the paint job will be done to match the existing home. But then we're changing the paint the following spring, so. <laughs> okay. All right, thank you, sir. Right. Anyone else here to speak to this item today? Seeing none, back to the commission. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion on the motion? Okay, call the roll. Vince? Aye. Prop? Aye. Eifer? Aye. Bygood? Aye. Cord? Aye. Bowen? Aye. Jones? Aye. Aye. Motion carried 8-0. Moving on, item number two, residential design standards variance request for the modification of one window on the south side elevation of a house located at 903 West South Park Avenue. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. And this is another design standards variance request. Um, this case, uh, the applicant um, received a notice from the City of Oshkosh Inspections Division um, it was observed that a window had been replaced on the south facade of the home and no building permit was obtained for the work. Um, the applicant contacted planning services to discuss their options and resulted in applying for a design standard variance. Uh, the subject property is located on at the southwest corner of West South Park Avenue and Rugby Street. It contains a single family structure and a single car detached garage. Um, the home was built in 1964 and the surrounding area uh, is predominantly single family uses with, with exception of a funeral home northeast of, northeast of, the, of the subject site. The property in the areas to the east, west and south are zoned SR9 single family residential 9 and uh, the funeral home to the north is zoned um, N NMU neighborhood mixed use. <coughs> Okay, this is what was observed by the inspections department. Um, they replaced uh, an approximately 12 foot wide by 70, oh, I'm sorry, 16 foot, wait, I'm sorry, where am I? Six foot by 12 foot, 72 square foot window and reduced it down to a four foot by four foot, 16 <coughs> square foot window. Um, the code requires um, all window and door openings shall be maintained and not altered, but the code does allow for a 10% variation due to having difficulties to acquire similar sized windows sometimes. But uh, in this case, the new window is 77.8% smaller than the original, uh, far exceeding what's allowed by code. The owner purchased the home in January of 2017. Uh, the previous window was broken and leaking into the home or wa leaking water into the home and it was decided to downsize the unusually large window to provide a better view of the backyard and provide uh, more usable wall space in the kitchen area. Um, also looking at the photos, the previous window provided a direct view of the detached garage. If you look at, this is a view from the inside of the house looking out, you just imagine extending that another probably five or six feet this way, you just have a very pleasant view to, to look at. Uh, so staff evaluated the size reduction and the impact on the design of the home in regard to the purpose and intent of the design standards. Um, staff took a look at other homes on the block and most homes uh, along the block have similar sized windows to that of the window that was used for this replacement. Uh, a, few, a few homes do have larger picture type windows in the front facade for their you know, living or front room but with this being on the side, it doesn't have as much of a visual impact from the street. Then in addition, the close proximity of the, um, the detached garage from the house, which is only about five feet away, 
uh, looking down the street from both directions, um, it's almost impossible to see the, the original window uh, due, to, due to the garage's location. Uh, so staff doesn't feel that there will be any vis visibility impact from the street. Um, staff also considered the architectural impact on the home. Um, staff felt or feels that the size of the original window is probably oversized in regard to the scale of the home. Um, even if the detached garage was not shielding the facade, the new window's size and shape is more compatible or comparable to the other windows on the home. So uh, staff believes that the purpose and intent of the design standards is being upheld and achieves the goal of the property owner, which is to add more usable space uh, for the homeowners. So with that, staff is recommending approval of the variance request uh, to pr pr permit the reduction of the one window uh, with the finding that the standards do not apply to this particular project because the windows reduced window size will not adversely affect the structure's architectural design, the neighborhood character, or curb appearance. And we are placing one condition on that, that appropriate building permits be obtained from the Inspection Services Division, and then the siding work be completed within 12 months of this approval. Thank you, sir. Technical questions. Jeff. Any particular reason given why they didn't get a building permit? Once again, they're sitting here trying to fix something that was already done. Yes, unaware that they needed one is my guess. Yeah, I hear that a lot. A small percentage mm -hmm. that we do get of that, Jeff. The uh, second question is why such a liberal time frame to get the siding done? Twelve months seems extremely long to me to have the siding replaced. Is there was there? Is there a hardship that we don't know about why you I think it's siding done earlier? I think we've generally done 12 months, so we can reduce it or, you know, the, or this body can reduce it if they want to. But I'd like to know from the petitioner if you can do it less than that because 12 months okay. seems quite quite lengthy to me. Okay. To have something done like that. Sure. I, I don't know how long it's already been like. I think the, that way. the violation notice was sent out in August, August 11th. So really it's more like 15, 16 months mm -hmm. before That's they get true. the siding on. And mm -hmm. Even though it's not really visible because of the, the garage, but I think that's just way too long. Mm -hmm. Siding is a code. I mean, covering up the siding is also a code. We have to, because you can't have that building material expo exposed like that. So, you know, we could pursue it uh, if it was a short time period under the, under the build, what would building. Is, what does code allow? What's the time frame does it allow? Because to me, if it if it allows a year, it should be a year from when you should have got the building permit. Generally, it's a, generally the permits are valid for a year. So, so to me, it, should, it should back up to where he should have gotten the, the permit. Let's say August, so nine months or so. Yeah, so then it should be August of twenty one there. Yeah. Well, if if we're doing that, they purchased the home in January and they had the window broken already. So I mean, if you're doing that, you're only going to give them two months. Well, I'm, I'm from saying from the time right. that they replaced the window, you know, I mean, the code violation was in August. We don't know exactly when he did it. So if we start from August, that gives them nine, nine months to get it done. Thereabouts, whatever it is. Other technical questions? Eight months. All right. Anyone here from the public to speak to this item today? What up, sir? Um, I'm the homeowner, and to answer that question, I, I'm getting a permit tomorrow if everything passes, and I imagine the siding's not going to take more than a week. So it's not going to be you prolonged. Be right, months. right, so, correct. So if we cut that down to three months, you'd be fine with that? Three months from, from today? Correct. Anything else, sir? That's up. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else here to speak to this item today? Okay, seeing none, back to the commission. Jeffrey. I'd move to approve, but I'd want to change the uh, condition to uh, from 12 months to three months. I'll second that motion. Three months from today? Yeah. Okay. Three, yep. three months from today. All right. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, let's call roll. Yes. Aye. Rob? Aye. Kiefer? Aye. Weigert? Aye. Ford? Aye. Bowen? Aye. Jones? Aye. 
Wojtek. Aye. Motion carried 8 0. All right, moving on to item number three specific implementation plan request for a dog daycare and overnight boarding at 3792 Jackson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the subject site is located on the east side of Jackson Street, approximately 250 feet north of Snell Road, and has a SMU PD zoning designation. Um, in September of this year, Common Council approved a conditional use permit and general development plan uh, for the proposed dog daycare use with conditions. So they are now applying for the um, specific implementation plan approval for the site. And here's the uh, site as it exists. Um, it currently has three structures, which are a single family <coughs> home and associated two stall garage, as well as one commercial building. The applicant will be re um, renovating the commercial structure and garage and removing the existing uh, single family home. And that is a requirement that they remove the home um, as required by the CUP and GDP approval. Here's the site plan. They are proposing to add eight hard surface parking spaces as well as a 77 foot by 87 foot pea gravel outdoor play area. Um, and that play area will be enclosed by a six foot tall uh, black chain link fence. Um, per the per Department of Public Works requests and also uh, per uh, CUP and GDP approval, the southernmost existing um, gravel driveway will be removed. So there'll be one, um, one entrance to the property which will be um, a single single access of 30 feet wide at the right of way with a 40 foot wide curb cut along Jackson Street. Um, the parking area consists of eight parking stalls which includes one handicap space which will be accessed from a 24 foot wide drive aisle and the proposed parking plan will be code compliant. Here's the proposed signage. Um, they're proposing <coughs> a 32 square foot wall sign on the, on the primary commercial building as well as a uh, six foot tall, 24 square foot double sided monument sign along Jackson Street. And the, uh, the area for the signage meets the SMU district standards for signage area. Um, and as far as the location of the monument sign, um, the petitioner has agreed to meet the 25 foot front yard setback for the sign. Um, for landscaping, um, the only additional required landscaping for the site um, will be the parking lot perimeter screening and also um, along the street frontage. And um, the site plan lacks the required um, landscaping for shrubs along the, around the parking lot perimeter um, and also lacks um, the required landscaping points for um, trees along the street frontage. Um, so the landscaping plan will be required to have those additions um, and that can be addressed at the site plan review process. Uh, a stormwater management plan has been submitted and has been approved by the Department of Public Works, which and it is pending final grading and paving plan that is being prepared by the contractor. Uh, the applicant is proposing modification of the front facade of the primary building, so they will be removing the existing overhead door and replacing that with a 42 inch wide by seven foot tall entry door, and it will have um, a four foot by six foot window on either side of the door. Um, the refuse enclosure is being proposed at the, uh, the southwest corner of the existing garage. Um, it will be 10 foot by 10 foot in size um, with a six, and it will be constructed with a 6 foot tall dog eared wood fence. Um, and a base standard modification <coughs> will be required as it is um, proposed to be between the street and the buildings. Um, staff does feel that it is a sufficient distance from the neighboring multifamily residential properties to the east. Um, and staff is requesting additional landscaping be installed along the south and west sides of the enclosure for additional screening of the refuse. And staff is recommending approval of the plan development for a specific impl implementation plan for a dog daycare with overnight dog boarding uh, with the following conditions. A base standard modification to permit a refuse enclosure between the building and public street and additional landscaping be provided along the south and west sides of the refuse enclosure as approved by the Department of Community Development. I right, thank you. Technical questions? All right, seeing none, anyone here from the public to speak to this item today? Going once, twice. Okay, public comments closed. Back to the commission. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion on the motion? Being none, call the roll. Vince. Aye. Rob. Aye. <clears throat> Kiefer. Aye. Bygert. Aye. Ford. Aye. 
Bowen. Aye. Holmes. Aye. Boytek. Present. Aye. Motion carried, 8-0. Moving on to item number four, a zone change from I Institutional District to IPD Institutional District with plan development overlay and approval for a general development plan, the property located at 425 Lakeshore Drive. All right, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll have to bear with me. Mark wrote this staff report, so I'll be, I'll be muddling my way through it a little bit here. So. All right. Uh, we have two requests uh, before us today. One is a zone change, and that's simply adding the uh, plan development uh, district to the already zoned uh, institutional zoning district, as you can see on the map there. That's the filtration plant. It's currently zoned institutional as a public use, and it is in the area, uh, residential area, kind of to the south and to the and to the west. And you have park to the north. You do have the waters over there to the south, to the southeast. Uh, basically what they're proposing, they're proposing to add the plan development because they're proposing uh, as part of the plan development, uh, we're also looking at the general development plan for the property at the site uh, because they have a, have a lot of improvements uh, that they're proposing as part of this process. And just as a note, um, we're doing the GDP tonight, we're not doing the SIP. The SIP is going to come back, we're going to have a workshop on that, and that's where we're going to talk a little bit about the architecture things like that, some of the concerns that we've heard raised. This is just the general development plan. Uh, come back with that. <coughs> so basically what, what, what we're doing right now, this is 425 Lakeshore, um, approximately 9.1 acres. Uh, the use itself, the property consists of low lift pump stations, rapid mixed channels, flocculation basins, sediment basins, uh, and various other accessory structures. Two of the clear, clear wells were constructed prior to 1915 and the third was con constructed in 1961. Uh, we're proposing to uh, demolish three of the existing clear wells and then uh, uh, replace them with uh, two uh, new reservoirs. Let's see what we got here. Trying to get up to the site plan. Okay, here we go. Uh, so here's the site plan of the, of the proposed uses on site. Um, they're proposing uh, replacing them with two new at-grade reservoir, reservoirs and a new high lift station. Uh, they're also proposing a, a <coughs> new uh, intermediate lift station uh, on one of the sites in there. Right here. Here are the new reservoirs being proposed and, and there's the lift station. Also around the site as part of this proposal. Uh, as you can see in, in the description, they're talking about putting up a six foot, well, there's an existing fence there now. Uh, I believe they want to go to six feet with barbed wire on the top. I also believe that there's some uh, fabric or slatting that's being proposed as part of that. Uh, the proposed reservoirs are approximately 35 uh, and a half feet in total height, maximum height for an <coughs> accessory structure. Uh, in an institutional district is 18 feet, so thus we're recommending a base standard modification to allow the reservoirs to exceed uh, 18 feet. The new high lift station is proposed to be at 30 feet in total height, and the addition for the intermediate <coughs> pump station is proposed to be 31 feet in total height. Again, a base standard modification will be required for the proposed structures because they're accessory structures. The proposed north reservoir is shown as approximately 10 feet from the east property line. The proposed high, high lift station is, is approximately 19 feet from the east property line, and the proposed south reservoir is approximately 17 feet from the east property line and approximately six feet from the south property line. All these are within the setback area, so all these require a base standard modification, which again is the reason why we're going through the plan, requesting a zone change and adding the plan development. Accessory structures uh, must be, uh, have a 60 foot front yard setback and must be a minimum of five feet behind the principal structure. Again, we don't have that situation. You have a tough situation where you have streets on all sides of the property. <coughs> So even Lakeshore Drive, there's a question as to whether that's actually a, a dedicated public road. It acts like a public road, but essentially the, the, the site is surrounded by four streets. So you have some of those setback issues. Again, the reason why we're proposing the plan development. Um, the, the, they're proposing that six, six foot high chain link fence with three, three strands of barbed wire around the proposed facility. Again, you know, these areas all around the entire facility. Um, let's see here. Code does not allow barbed wire fencing unless the fencing meets the required building setback. Again, they don't because it's in the front yard. Uh, base standard modifications will be required to permit the barbed wire fence along the property line and to allow a six foot fence along the front yards. The chain link fence will need to be galvanized or coated. Uh, access or parking, nothing's really changing with that. Uh, <coughs> 
if they come back with some additional sign recommendations, they'll be come they'll come back as part of the uh, the SIP. Uh, landscaping, uh, because there's new development, landscaping is going to be required for some of these new areas. We can take into account existing landscaping, but we don't have an exi a landscaping plan to go off of on this. They'll have to come back with a landscaping plan. Um, building elevations, the building elevations have been provided, but that's what we're going to talk about uh, as part of this, um, as part of the C as part of the workshop after this. Um, I'll come back as part of the specific <laughs> implementation plan. Staff is recommending approval of the zone change and uh, GDP with the following <coughs> conditions. Well, here, here's some, here's some overall pictures, kind of, of of the site and what's being proposed. You can see the new reservoirs and lifts and pump station being put in there. Um, so that's kind of some different pers perspectives uh, of the development. Uh, this would be the fence. Uh, that they're proposing. And this is uh, us recommending approval uh, based standard modification uh, to allow uh, the proposal uh, of, the, of the various setbacks as we described. All right, technical questions. Jeffrey. Can I ask on the fencing, why is the requirement for the barbed wire up there? Is that is that a security issue? That would be a question that I would direct to the applicant. And, and they're here. And then why are we not requiring you know, to put the slats in there to have some kind of way of screening? So I think they're proposing the interwoven similar to what's at the central garage. Is that uh, St Steve Brand, I'm the utility manager, mm -hmm. and Lynn Moore is also here. She's uh, on the design team from CH2M. Uh, there, I don't know where the barbed wire detail comes from because we're not proposing any barbed wire on this, so I apologize uh, for that. Uh, the fencing is going to be exactly the same as the fencing that's on site right now on the Washington Avenue side when we did the seat to, no we don't we're not slatting it because uh, the concern with slatting it is that it, that people it's a security issue because you can't see through the slats we need to be able to see what's occurring inside and outside for security purposes so we're, we're not we're not trying to slat it what we're trying to do is make the property a, a, a uh, aesthetically appealing so that we don't need it, it it's uh, as you can see uh, and there is a landscaping plan on this. Uh, you can see on the lakeshore side, uh, there's some landscaping on there. So we do have a general landscaping plan uh, to do additional landscaping, but we're also open to uh, suggestions uh, from the commission <coughs> on things. On the Washington side, we did put landscaping in there. We're gonna try and continue that similar type of landscaping through there. Um, but it, uh, I think if you slap the fence and then you've got 30 foot structures, it's not going to look very nice to have, you know, that stuff peeking over the top. And again, I would have security concerns not being able to see the, through that fence. Uh, and, yeah, uh, but, but a, a galvanized chain link fence. It's not galvanized. Not it's black. It's black coated fence. So, uh, I, do we have any pictures of that on the... Can I make one more clarifying? And I think we can cover this in the workshop too also. Go okay. ahead. Um, we, the perimeter fence along Washington is a black coated chain link fence, no barbed wire. It was installed in the 2008-2009 uh, uh, project. And the only segment of fence that we're going to be replacing in this project is located uh, east of the Clearwell, so right along Lakeshore. It's several hundred feet of very old silver painted fence that um, maybe at one time that fence had barbed wire on it, but it doesn't today. So um, new fencing is relatively limited and the new fence that's going in is matching the existing black coated chain link fence. All right. All right so Darren, we can remove that that barbed wire. Um, yeah, I don't, Mark there's picked no up the barbed wire from somewhere. I don't know where. He, yeah, there's no reason <coughs> to put it in there if we don't need it. I don't know where he, I don't know where he got that from. So yeah, that that could come off. And yeah, I was just looking at the staff report one more time, and it did say that we have a conceptual landscaping plan. The only thing that Mark Mark's comments were it doesn't meet our current code requirements. That's all I got. And then the six foot fence we, without the barbed wire, then it should also say you know six foot coated. 
uh, chain link. Oh, yeah, I would I would put that. Um, yeah, we would come off number four baseline modification to allow barbed wire fence within the primary building uh, setbacks. If there's no if there's no barbed wire, then we don't need that condition. Okay. Other technical question? All right, seeing none, anybody from the public to speak to this item today? Going once, twice, all right, back to the commission. Ed. I guess this maybe is a technical question, I don't know. Um, has there been a, any sort of neighborhood meeting, neighborhood outreach? Yeah, they, they, they held a neighborhood the, meeting. the background, I guess? I can't, I was not at that meeting, so I can't tell you. Um, Felton was there. There was a. It was an invited meeting, so I think they sent out notifications for the, the adjacent property owners and such. The city of Oshkosh uh, sent out letters to approximately seventy-five neighbors for a public meeting that was held October sixteenth, and at that meeting, we um, presented a PowerPoint overview of the project to the public, why the project was being done. Um, alternatives that were evaluated and um, uh, what the impacts would be for neighbors, primarily traffic during construction. And then as you can tell from the renderings, the newly constructed facilities have a high visual impact because we're by code required to no longer store water in buried tanks, but have those water storage tanks located above the floodplain in at grade reservoirs. Thank you. Was there was there general positive reaction to all of that, or or? Um, once we explained the background for the project, people understood. They they got it. Um, we will discuss at the workshop after this meeting the three comments that we received about the appearance of facilities and what um, we uh, have, what we propose to do about responding to those comments. Thank you. Thanks. Further discussion, folks? Jeff? Yeah, I, I would want to entertain change in three to say base standard modification to allow a six foot coated chain link fence and then <coughs> approve item four and if we're okay with that I'd move to approve. I'm a second that. Go ahead. That's been moved and seconded. And thirded. Any discussion on the motion with the changes? <coughs> okay, call the roll. Yes. Aye. Goff, aye. Buford? Aye. Weiger? Aye. Ford? Aye. Bowen? Aye. Hines? Aye. Fortet? Aye. Motion carried 8 0. Now on to item number five approval of a general development and specific implementation plan and plans development amendment for outdoor vehicle storage for property located at 3596 Stearns Drive. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, the applicants applying for a uh, plan development amendment and general and de general development and spe spe uh, specific implementation plan for outdoor storage at uh, the subject address 3596 Stearns Drive. The property is located at the southeast corner of Stearns Drive and Omni Drive and consists of a, an approximately four and a half acre parcel. The site is currently developed as a contractor's yard and office, and in 2014, they received a uh, plan development amendment to expand the use to include manufactured housing and sales and outdoor display area. Uh, the property is owned uh, UIPD, urban industrial, with a plan development overlay, and uh, the 10 and 20 year comprehensive land use plans recommend uh, commercial development for this area. Uh, the subject site is bounded by a vacant warehouse and tavern that's uh, to the north, which is in the town of Oshkosh. Vacant land and vacant land uh, to the east and south, and U.S. Highway 45 to the west. Let's see, we'll go to the site plan here. Uh, the applicant's proposing um, 
the addition of a 37,500 square foot gravel vehicle storage area. The area would be fenced in and used in conjunction with the uh, currently vacant building at 1981 West Snell Road, which is, I'm sorry to see here, over here. Um, the proposed use for vehicle delivery operations is for Ashkosh defense. Um, the applicant is proposing a zero foot <coughs> setback between the proposed site and the adjacent property, which will require a cross access easement between them. Uh, over here, this is the, the eastern limits of the storage area, which is shown to be 10 feet from the east property line and goes north and bunts up uh, with a zero foot setback to the north. Um, the, the storage area would be accessed by two rolling gate entrances and enclosed with a proposed six inch slatted chain link fence with barbed wire. Uh, the fence as proposed does not meet city uh, requirements for outdoor storage. The minimum height required is eight feet tall and slatting does not constitute a solid fence um, or, look, or something more, more in the likes of uh, interwo interwoven material will be required for the chain link fencing for appropriate screening. Um, so um, the plans will need to be modified um, uh, during the site plan review process. Uh, next item. Oh, this is a pr the proposed uh, um, elevation for the fence with the uh, three uh, arms of barbed wire on the top. Um, it was brought to our attention that a portion of the property may be located in a wetland. Um, originally, we had a condition. Um, the, the city did not receive a copy of the wetland delineation. However, on Friday, um, <coughs> we received copies from the DNR. Uh, up on the screen are the results of those findings. On the left side, covers more the more the northern portion of the property, and um, this this area up here has been clear of any wetland findings. However, on the south side. Um, the, the delineation resulted in uh, the finding that there were some wetlands discovered over here. And due to the changes of the, uh, the environment of the surface area and over in this area, they were not able to conduct a full delineation. So that will be addressed during site plan review. Uh, plans need to be changed or modified to accommodate the, 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 the deline delineation's findings. Um, as far as parking, no additional parking is being proposed. Um, the applicant did uh, submit a lighting and photometric plan and meets uh, city code with the, with the exception of the height of the proposed light poles. The height is shown to be 30 foot tall, whereas the maximum allowed in the UI district is 25 feet, so the plans will need to be modified um, prior to the site plan review process. This should not impact the photometric plan as the lights will be lower and less chance for spillage off-site. A signage package was not submitted, but any signage proposed will need to meet the base zoning requirements of the UI district. A landscaping plan was submitted. Let's see, here it is. Um, and the plan includes a variety of shrubs and trees along the south side of the vehicle storage area, which, where this is the most highly visible area from um, Highway 45. Uh, the, the zoning ordinance requires landscaping at a ratio of 10 points per 1,000 square feet of developed area. So the uh, 37,500 square foot uh, storage area requires 375 landscaping points. The proposed plan indicates 149 points, so they're deficient with the landscaping requirements. So um, the applicant will need to modify their plans prior to the site plan review. Stormwater management, um, stormwater management plans have been submitted and are currently being reviewed by the Department of Public Works. Um, final stormwater management will be need to be approved by the Department of, uh, Department of Public Works uh, during the site plan review process. So staff believes uh, development is appropriate for the site and is recommending approval with um, six conditions, one of which can be eliminated. Uh, the first one was submittal of the DNR, or the DNR's concurrence for the wetlands. That's been achieved, received documentation. 
uh, final approval of, of the stormwater management plans by DPW. Um, the fence shall be increased to eight feet solid fence and be in compliance with the city standards for outdoor storage. The proposed light poles be reduced to 25 feet. Uh, cross access easement is required for the common lot line on the north side of the subject site. And a base standard modification to allow the zero foot setback along the north property line. All right, thank you. Technical questions, Jeff and then Ed. Uh, shouldn't, one, shouldn't we put in there that they have to adhere to the, as a, as a condition we have that they have to adhere to the water standards? Shouldn't we also put in there that they have to adhere to our landscape ordinance? They will. Right now the plan's deficient, but the plans will be. That's, huh? that's what yeah. I'm getting. No, yeah. you don't need to do that because oh. we won't. Oh, I, I see what you're saying. Okay, yeah. and then second on the getting used to our new designations for zoning, does this zoning allow for barbed wire? Yes. So, and the solid fence, it has to be eight foot solid and then the barbed wire on top of that. So, Correct. so you probably can't count the barbed wire as part of the eight no. foot. No. Plus that wouldn't gotcha. be solid. That's gonna be solid, not just slides. Okay. Gotcha. Ed. Um, the 50 foot wide natural gas easement, is that the ANR pipeline? Mm. Yes, it is. Um, and I guess there's a whole bunch of other questions that I've probably got for the applicant. Yep. <laughs> there, there are certain things you can do within those easements and there are certain things that you can't do. And I'm just curious as to some of the things that you can't do if they've gone through that. Yeah, they'll obviously need approval from a &R prior to that and it's moving heavy trucks on it. Yeah, so I, if they're going to, is there anybody here to, are we done with technicals? The applicant, I guess, to, no, we're not done with technicals yet. Well, no, we get, when we get sure. to technicals, there's yeah, the up here. here. I'll okay. ask that question to them. Correct. Other technical questions? All right, seeing none, anyone here from the public to speak to this item today? Come on up, sir. My name is Howard Fluter from Fond du Lac. I'm here representing the petitioner, Dan Dowling, and I think I can answer some of the questions that have been raised here. All right, please do. Uh, ANR uh, pipeline. We do have uh, full uh, compliance uh, issues and agreement with the project from ANR um, signed, cross, uh, not signed cross easement, but uh, signed uh, uh, work agreements to work into the space. Okay. Uh, there are limitations on how much can be excavated in there. Obviously, we expose that line. And they allow the fencing? They are, they are allowing us to fence, correct. I know there are certain things that they allow within there. I, uh, I see your landscaping located where it is, I'm assuming that. ANR has been supplied with these exact same plans and they've actually signed off on them. Okay. We have Great. that in our files. That's awesome. That's the, awesome. Um, as was stated by uh, the presentation here, a lot of this stuff is in process and in fact we did just receive the two <coughs> letters from uh, D, uh, DNR on Friday. And again, it is two letters. One is a concurrence, the other one is a non-concurrence, but that only means that they weren't able to verify uh, the position and existence of the wetlands in the um, lower right hand corner that's up there. Uh, there was a little patch of essentially water runoff from an existing storage yard, former playground of the school facility that was here. And that was uh, a potential for a wetland area which needs to be better evaluated come the next growing season. Uh, therefore, part of our uh, working <coughs> with the uh, um, planning division, planning department, is to come up with a phase one, phase two uh, aspect for this project because the uh, DNR has cleared us for the north 75% um, of the site that's proposed. Um, and we do have a new uh, stormwater and grading plan that uh, proposes a phase one, phase two, phase one to be done now, phase two to be done after uh, further DNR investigation in the spring. Um, realize that this is a, a uh, fast track project and uh, Oshkosh Defense needs to start using this facility. Therefore, we are still proposing to do at least the phase one of the parking at this season. Well, wait. Any questions for the petitioner as long as he's here? All right, thank you, sir. Yep. I did have one further point. Yep. Um, under the six conditions, now five, uh, it does talk about solid fence. Uh, we understand there's an opacity requirement. Um, if it's listed and adopted, uh, hopefully, as solid fence, does that give us the opportunity to come up with alternative uh, products that may meet oh. the opacity requirements? Yep, just uh, submit them to our office and we'll review it and go okay. from there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Anyone else here to speak to this item today? 
All right, seeing on back to the commission. Make a motion to approve with the modified condition. Five conditions. Five conditions. <laughs> Second. All right, any discussion on the motion? Seeing on call the roll. Hints. Aye. Bob? Aye. Afer? Aye. Aye. Ford? Aye. Bowen? Aye. Holmes? Aye. Boytek? Aye. Motion carried 8 0. And our final item prior to the workshop is number six, an amendment to the specific implementation plan approval for a mixed-use arena event complex and right-of-way dedication at property located at 1212 South Main Street. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, for some of you that might not know me, my name is Kelly Nyforth. I'm the Economic Development Services Manager here. Um, I'm oh, sorry. Well, I'll take care of it. <laughs> um, I'm helping out planning staff here. Uh, we have uh, quite a few items and some folks gone, so I'm pretty familiar with the arena project, and I know you guys are too, so I volunteered to help out uh, with this item. Um, as you see in front of us, uh, this is the uh, now called the Menominee Nation Arena. This is a PD amendment, and this is for the signage. This is the third time that you've seen uh, anything regarding the arena. Uh, January 24th, 2017 was when we established it. And then we had a PD amendment back in August 15th, 2017. Um, and this is just basically a few signs uh, that we're bringing forward. Um, one of them is because of the naming rights were just recently uh, released. And then um, also to uh, dedicate right of way um, on the property. Um, to enhance the pedestrian safety on South Main Street. So we'll go over a few of the items. Uh, the main one is the wall signage. Or you want to start? Okay, we'll start with the right away what? dedication. As long as we're here, yeah. Do sure. <laughs> um, like I said before, this is really just to enhance the pedestrian safety on Main Street. Uh, if you're familiar with Main Street, you know it's the sidewalk and then it's the street and there's heavy traffic there. So as uh, we're looking to redevelop uh, in the Sawdust District, we probably will be coming forward to you multiple times and uh, trying to get additional uh, right of way for sidewalks. Um, in this case, it's a larger sidewalk that is being built outside the arena. Um, so folks have a little bit more space between them and the uh, road. Um, so that's the, the main um, push behind uh, getting additional right of way. Um, and then looking at the signage, um, Darren's going a little too fast me here. Uh, the main uh, base standard modifications that we're looking at today, uh, wall signage on the west side of the building. So that's the entrance side of the building. Um, as you see in there, um, the- it, Adrian, of your staff report. <laughs> it is quite uh, substantially higher than uh, what is permitted. Um, that's due to the video board that you approved back in August. Uh, they have a large herd symbol logo that's counted towards the signage uh, square footage and then just uh, you know different signage throughout where the entrances are and whatnot so that is uh, you know the main reason for the base standard modifications on the west side i believe the other walls um, they meet uh, within the, they're within the zoning code um, and the other item is the monument sign um, this will be on the corner of, on the southwest corner of Main Street and South Park. Um, this is something that um, you'll see in your conditions that also exceeds um, what's currently allowed in the CMU district. And um, staff is okay with it. Um, you'll see the first, um, some of the uh, conditions as far as exceeding the square footage. And we also added two, um, I guess, reminders more so in there about what type of colors, flashing um, you know is allowed on this signage just so it does not interrupt the traffic signals that are going to be at that corner um, staff is working uh, with the um, with the company that's putting up the sign to ensure that it does not get in anybody's viewpoint as they're coming down Main or South Park that would distract them so um, condition five and six are actually already in the zoning code, but we just put it in here just to remind folks um, that you know we do have to follow these rules. Let's see if, I look through, see if there's anything else going. And that's the right of way then. Okay, and then these are the base standard modifications, and then the two recommendations that uh, we had. I had just discussed, which is already included in the zoning code. 
So it's a, I mean, this is a special case, kind of why it's coming through, why it's comes through under the plan development is this is kind of, <coughs> this is a clear classic uh, plan development because it's a special use, something that we don't see, which is why, you know, we don't have a lot of arenas in town. Uh, most of arena, most arenas have some sort of, they have a lot of signage around it. Um, so that's why you're seeing a lot of base standard modifications for the amount of signage that's located on here and what, and what we're proposing and what we've approved. Um, so from a, just from a land use standpoint, it's not that unusual. Um, the land dedication, which we also need, uh, we, we need you to, to move on that. That's for, for what Kelly said, we need an additional right away so we can get move, move people up and down North Main Street as part of this project. South Main. South Main, sorry. <laughs> All right, technical Hopefully questions. Main. Jeff? Fortunately, we're in, we're in a day and age that, that we have to be cautious about big events like this. And in this dedication of the 20 feet, that you're proposing to put a, a sidewalk, if I remember right, there's a, a fairly sizable courtyard, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have we given any thought about putting vehicle barriers along that walkway in between, you know, as part of that walkway in front of that courtyard, given the unfortunate situation that, that the world is in with, with, with terrorists and stuff? We need to think about those kinds of things because you could have, you know, quite a few people standing outside and, you know, sidewalk isn't going to be good enough. Obviously, we've, we've seen that here recently. And I was wondering if we started to give some thought that, you know, because that's going to be a city responsibility to, to build that sidewalk, I would assume, that we give some thought to putting vehicle barriers along that uh, to protect the people on the other side. Um, currently with our plans, uh, the city, it's part of the city um, right-of-way uh, project where we're installing the infrastructure, the sidewalk. We do not have bollards or anything on that sidewalk. Um, I do know that when we are going through the planning process, we set this, we sent the site plan for the arena to the police department and they did recommend bollards um, in that pedestrian plaza area in front of the building like you had mentioned. So I probably defer to the Bayland representative that is here today and to see if they are moving forward with it and it might be something in the future too that they would look at. Well, and since this is a PD, that might be something that, Darren, can, can we, this is a PD, right? This is a PD, correct. correct. So is that, I know this is kind of hindsight type of thing, and I wouldn't have thought about this until all these recent things happening, but we need to, to, to be a little bit diligent in our thinking about protection, even though, you know, God forbid something would happen, but I would rather be on the cautious side and the city actually be thinking about that along with the, the developers, especially in areas where we may have these kinds of large gatherings and things of that nature, including even, you know, as we move forward as a city, you know, where we have, you know, the um, farmer's markets that we, we think about, you know, having those bollards that can come up from the, from the ground to come mm -hmm. up during that event so that we prevent those kinds of things you know, potentially from happening. So this would be our first one where we would have a fairly, be able to have a fairly sizable gathering, you know, on the side of a road. And I'd like to have the city work with the developer to think about putting bollards as we suggested as re recommended by the police. It actually makes sense to me, but we need to think about those kinds of things should those Given extend? Day and age. Should those extend all the way to 11th Street? I, I don't yeah. know. I mean, I'm not going to design it. You know, I'm just, you know, since we're we're dedicating that right away, that we think about those kinds of things. And and yeah, maybe you're you're correct because it, that it needs to extend beyond just in front of the arena uh, because the amount of people that could be walking, you know, to get to cars or whatever. Um, I, I don't have a, an answer for that, but um, I think it's something that. I don't know if we, we have to put it in here or if we, after this action, that we really, when we start to, to, to look at what we're, you know, what we're going to put in that right away, mm -hmm. that we work with the developer and yourself and, and, and have <coughs> police involved in that to start really planning for those kinds of things and in future things and, and to protect the citizenry against you know, the potential for that happening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's not just a New York or a Los Angeles or a Chicago thing anymore. This can happen in 
in smaller cities and things of that nature, and we have to be diligent as law enforcement, the FBI, and the rest of them have have said on numerous occasions on the on the news channels that I'm watching. Sure. Absolutely. Well, that is a question that we could ask the representative from Bayland. Otherwise, it is something we could look forward in the future well, as we're yeah, planning I, I, Yeah, I think it's areas. something the city really Absolutely. has to think about. And we should be working, you know, at least talking with, with Bayland, you know, the developers and, mm -hmm. and talking about that. It's just unfortunate that we have to think about that, but we need to think about that. And that shouldn't be included in this process. And this is something that we want people to enjoy and now's the time to to kind of put something in that's aesthetically appealing but it's also protective sure okay thank you thank you other technical questions Kathy. i'm unclear where the monument sign will be located because we've got verbiage here about it may not be located at um poor location in <laughs> your packet looks like it's going to be at the corner of south park and and, and south, south main, main street right there. So, okay right but how there's... close to the on page uh, 15 of your packet it has a number one in the southwest corner of the site uh -huh. oh got it okay thank you yep and it is it is within the um the setback the permitted setback area so it meets um current code it was just the city, as you see in there, the, um, there's a condition where the city will work with the developer, the sign company, to ensure that the placement, the location of the sign, is in the correct spot. Other technical questions? Okay, seeing none, anyone here from the public to speak to this item today? Come on up, sir. <clears throat> Ma'am. I'm Wendy Hillsburg with Fox Valley Pro Basketball, Inc. I'm Matt Ritter with uh, Bayland Buildings. Um, I would just like to address the security issues on the arena and um, the security standards that we have taken will amaze you. Um, they had to be approved through the MBA and unfortunately with the world that we do live in, the security standards on this building are exemplified. Um, we do have ballards across the entire uh, front part of the building that also extends into the parking lot. They've even went so far as to tell you what perimeter parking can be and how close a vehicle can be, where shipments can be. Um, I can give you the security manual, but the, I can assure you that that has been thought about more than what we care to think about. The bollards are in, so good call on that. So the, so the bollards are outside, you know, that front gathering area before the sidewalk that we're dedicating to put in? Yes, we have uh, some right in front of the arena there. It's just, we specifically called them out as security bollards right in front of the main How concourse. How far apart are they? Are they? Um, they can't, so a car can't go through. Yeah, a car can't That's what the intent yeah. right. was. Cool. All right. That, that, that's it. I mean, mm -hmm. unfortunately, we have to think about right. that oh, stuff. Yeah. And this Absolutely. Is a premier project to do that on. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Any questions for the petitioners as long as they're here? Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else here to speak to this item today? Okay, seeing none, public commentary is closed. Back to the commission. Make a motion to approve. Second. <clears throat> Moved and seconded. Do we have any questions on the motion or discussion of the motion itself? Seeing none, let's call a roll, Deb. Vince. Aye. Bob. Aye. Keeper. Aye. Weigert. Aye. Ford. Aye. Bowen. Aye. Tomes. Aye. Wojtek. Aye. Motion carried, 8 0. All right, that's the end of formal business. We do have a workshop to talk more about the lift station. Motion so to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, we're done. All right. Workshop. Did you see the game? Yeah. Thank you.